Right to Be Read podcast, episode number 96, interview with Chris Marr. Hey, authors. Wish you could just write books and forget about all this marketing and coordinating with freelancers and formatting and proofreading and stuff? You're not alone. It's every artist's dream to just be able to create art while turning over the whole business and marketing side to someone who really loves and is really great at doing just that. If you're ready to start treating your writing like a business and get an experienced publishing and marketing team behind your words, pay a visit to Archangel Inc. Archangel Inc. does absolutely everything needed to take a manuscript and turn it into a finished product ready to sell in all markets and multiple formats from cover design to audiobook and everything in between. And as an Archangel Inc. client, you'll be able to promote your book through Buck Books, the world's fastest growing book promotion website at no extra charge. To find out more, go to www.archangelinc.com. That's archangelinc.com. You are listening to the Right to Be Read podcast, and this is your host, Ani Alexander. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Right to Be Read podcast, the podcast that inspires and encourages writers. I'm your host, Danny Alexander, and as always, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. I will continue providing value and bringing interesting content to you. And uh, talking about content, today I'm will be interviewing Chris Marr. And Chris Marr is a content marketer, blogger, and podcaster. He helps businesses to embrace content marketing strategies and improve their communication. He is content marketer, blogger, director of Learning Every Day, founder of the Content Marketing Academy, and host of the Marketing Academy podcast. So apparently, we will be talking about content, creating content, marketing content, and positioning yourself through your content. Okay, so let's dive into content marketing details with Chris Marr. Hello, Chris. Thank you very much for coming over and welcome to the Right to be Right podcast. Hi, Annie. It's great to be here. Thanks very much for inviting me onto your show. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really <laughs> nice of you. <laughs> I'm, um, well, uh, I kind of followed you online for a while. And the, the, the first time I noticed you was I actually came across your podcast. And later on, we got connected. And after that, somehow, when I follow you online, and when I see what you're doing, I kind of, you know, for me, you're associated with content marketing. I mean, that's, uh, that's the person I would go to if I had different questions about that subject. So that's why I think it's logical to talk about those things first. Yeah, absolutely. But yes. maybe we can start uh, by, uh, because content marketing is not something which has been around for a very long time. So maybe you could tell how did you end up being there? Uh, um, well, basically, it all kind of started out back a couple of years ago. I started a business called Learning Every Day Limited, and it was a general marketing company. But if we go back to 2010, which is when I first started blogging, um, back then I was kind of doing the whole content marketing thing without actually realizing that's what I was doing. So over time, um, I really got deeper and deeper into the content marketing space and really did that just through following thought leaders and finding it really interesting. So I'm, you know, I'm passionate about it. Um, I'm also passionate about things like customer service and um, engaging with people and building an audience and, um, you know, th things that are associated with content marketing. So it kind of, I kind of, I don't know, it sort of matured into it, I guess, into content marketing through simply just through blogging, through um, surrounding myself with people in that in that sort of uh, industry or community. Um, so it's kind of evolved, I guess, over time into that. And I guess the only way I can kind of explain it is I went from being a sort of general marketer and that's where my interests were and just sort of niched down into a specific area of marketing, being content marketing. Mm -hmm, I see. So for those who kind of, you know, who don't really know and who have heard the term but don't really understand what does it mean exactly, if you can put it in simple words and explain what is content marketing in general? 
Okay, yeah. So there's quite a few definitions out there about what content marketing is. I know that you've had Ryan Handley on the show, and he's got a de- you know his definition is in his show. Um, and really, what I, I think that is about adding value to your audience, but there's also a sort of a, a, another sort of philosophy around content marketing that often gets missed, and I think it's the ability to communicate with people without selling to them. So your ability to share content, valuable content with people without a sales message, right? So it's something that's valuable to them. So, you know, any content that really puts your customers at the, or your audience at the heart of the content, it's for them. So anything that you do that's written for them adds value and you, you know, you're, you have the ability to communicate with them without selling to them. I think that's how I encapsulate what content marketing is. And obviously that's done on many different platforms, mainly digital platforms now we talk about blogs podcasts video and those are the sort of rich source sources of content that we use and we talk about but there's also things like ebooks and you know testimonial type content or case studies and webinars and all those kind of things they're all con- that's all content and the, the when you put the marketing beside content content marketing that's when you get the ability to promote your products and services pro- show people what you do instead of tell them um, and do it in a way that is uh, that takes the sales out of it. You do it so it adds value to people, so you can build trust and build that relationship up, build that connection up with people. Um, and I guess that kind of that's how I would explain it. That's how I kind of define content marketing. Does that does that help? Yeah, yeah, it makes complete sense. <laughs> and um, let's say I mean I'm, I'm just trying to put myself in our listeners' shoes, and uh, most of uh, my listeners are writers, both nonfiction and fiction writers. So they do create content periodically, sure. and mm-hmm. they do write books, but not all of them are yet involved in uh, this type of uh, y- you know uh, permanently putting out different type of contents out there for free and on digital platforms. So let's let's just try to understand what type of contents, uh, content could writers create, for example? What are the options that they could kind of, you know, look into and see which one suits them best? Okay, so I think it comes back to, if you're thinking about your audience and they're thinking that they're at the start of their journey or they're, they're, they're writing a book or they're self-publishing books or whatever it might be, I think we need to think about how... Um, how you keep in touch with your audience between publications, right? So between um, between the time when you're publishing big chunky pieces of content, i.e. your book, how do you keep in touch with people? And you can do that in many, many different ways. Initially, coming back to what I just discussed about having a rich source of content, a blog would make a lot of sense, for example, for a writer to have. And I think that would be um, a, a go-to place so you can share your story, keep in touch with your audience in between um, your, your bigger publications. Um, and I think that would be absolutely key to do that. But I would say that you know you can obviously do video and you can also, you're, Annie, obviously, you're, this is a piece of content marketing right now, a podcast where you're providing valuable information to your audience. So there's that as well. And I think you kind of have to go for the platform that you feel, one, that your audience is going to resonate with the most, but also the one that you actually feel comfortable doing as well. So, and then really, if you're at the start, what can really get in the way sometimes is thinking that you can do everything at once. And the best thing to do would actually be to to stick to one one channel, one one main platform, basically a blog or a video or a podcast, and think about how you can connect with your audience through that one platform. But it has to be something that you own. I think I think that's worth saying as well. So if you are going to go down this content marketing journey and you do want to connect with your audience um, at a deeper level and build that audience as well um, by writing something like a, a blog regularly. Um, you can actually create a, a community around your content. And I think that's an important thing as well as to, you know, the, your audience, your fans of your writing is how can you connect with them on a deeper level, more regularly, stay in front of them and um, put other content in front of them as well. So I think a blog, you know, a, a blog makes a lot of sense to me when it comes to writing. I've published a blog for five years. I haven't written a book, um, not yet, something that's on the list, the goal list, but um you know, by writing a blog, you, you've got that ability to communicate with your audience on a regular basis. 
Yeah, and I think it it kind of um, uh, you you work out your writing muscle as well by writing regularly. So it's and it's another type of writing as well. So it's yeah, sure. I, I guess it makes a complete sense for writers mm-hmm. to to start and write a blog around different topics. Yeah, well, we know a lot of authors out there that do write blogs and turn those blogs into books eventually you know they they, they yeah. can do a lot of, they do a lot of work around that like Seth Godin's a, a perfect example of that you know he shares his ideas on a daily basis and then you know he writes a book eventually about all the stuff that he's been writing a great testing ground a great place to get feedback from your audience yeah and um, I was just thinking about that there are many people who kind of um, for whom creating the content, like that phase of the things, uh, just the creation phase, is okay. uh, relatively easy. So they don't have problem with actually coming up with ideas and coming up with the content which is valuable to the audience. But at the very starting stage, when you don't have the audience yet, and if you put mm. it out there on your website, which doesn't have traffic, you may end up having kind of, you know, different, different, different type of content on the same place, uh, which is not seen and noticed. So how do people who are just starting and who don't really have uh, their audience in place, they're just building it up, how Mm -hmm. should they make sure that what they create is uh, noticed in this crowded and noisy space nice. yeah it's a good it's a good question it's difficult i would say in in the beginning in that when you're in that building stage it's it's really hard i would say that there was a couple of things one is that you have to kind of go through that stage where you feel like no one's reading your content um especially at the start and it takes time to educate people that you have a blog or a website and, and to point them in the direction of where that content is um i think in the very start I think it's really good to connect on a very personal level with your audience. So you can do, for example, if you've written a blog, then there's no harm in writing a personal email to maybe a dozen people or a couple of dozen people to tell them that you've written an article um, and see if they would share that on social media. That would be one one way to do it and get really sort of one-to-one with it. Um, there's the other other thing you can do is speak to your peers, your network, your business network, or your you know your your peers within a, in any network really, and um, tell them that you've got content there and that they, that you're looking for help to share and to spread the word that you've got this and basically use your peers um, to get your content out there as well. You could also tap into Twitter is a great place to tap into really, um, and you can use your network there as well to get your content out and just engage with people and use your content um, re- in a relevant way on Twitter. Um, but uh, you know you can do all of these things, but I would say it is, it is difficult in the start, especially if you write a blog article and the only person that reads it is your mum, for example, and yeah. it's trying to <laughs> it's trying to build that audience. It does take time, but you know. The good you're you're writing good quality content in the beginning. It's not that you. I think it's worth saying that even though you say your first blog article, you can use that again and time and time again to put content out. That you know you can reuse it. You can you can be, put it back out on social media again six months from now, a year from now. You know, so it's not like you're writing a piece of content and no one sees it ever. You know, you can revisit it and you can redistribute it and you can use it again. So, I would say that if you are writing your your first you know your first couple of dozen blog articles that it's not it doesn't go out of date you know or depending on the type of content you're writing typically it won't go out of date it's something that you can reuse again so that you are investing your time mm-hmm. um, in a value and something that will create value for you at some point you know it's an asset really for your for your um, audience or your 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 business basically mm-hmm. yeah. um, so in summary really it's about about audience building it, it's 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 basically piece by piece one person at a time um connecting with people you know on on um in in, in forums facebook groups linkedin groups is a great, great place to to connect mm-hmm. um twitter outreach is a great a great thing to do as well so go onto twitter find relevant conversations that you can get involved in um, and use your content there if you can in a relevant non-spammy way. So make sure that it's in, within relevant conversations. Um, and then what you want to do after that, really, I think, is you want to start to build up your own audience. So perhaps that could be your own LinkedIn group or your own Facebook group mm-hmm. or you know somewhere where your audience can start to interact with each other around your content and your story. And you know, so you've all got one thing in common. And in essence, what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a community around your 
your content, your mm-hmm. writing or your whatever it is that you do. Yeah, exactly. And and I'm I'm just, you know, I'm I I just recalled that uh, I mean, we we all have kind of many, many, many friends on Facebook, for example, and many of those, uh, you know, you you never even connect with them. So, you know, I mean, I have over 800 friends. So Mm -hmm. uh, lately, what I've been doing is, you know, whenever I had a bit of time, I was going ahead and randomly picking like three people I've never spoken to, and kind of trying to connect on personal level and see who those are, because having this big list and not knowing who they are, and those are the Mm -hmm. people who read your content content is a bit weird so you know very few are those who kind of who may uh, take it um, a bit I mean may think that you're a bit weird or something yeah. by, by connecting with them but uh, usually the the feedback is very positive and you end up realizing and finding out many many new things uh, about yes. things you didn't know yeah so on that then I would say that one of the things I've been doing recently and I've been testing this out on Instagram and um, Facebook Twitter any social media platform that I'm at that I, that I spend time on is instead of like a lot of people click like on Facebook or they'll click like on Instagram um, or they'll retweet on Twitter right and it's really a it's a it's a very lazy very easy to do thing you know you don't have to think very much to do that but what actually takes more thought is a comment or a reply um, and what I've been doing is I've if I, if I see, see something on any of these platforms and I'm tempted to click like I have to force myself to leave a comment as well um, so if I don't leave if I don't want to leave a comment I don't click like um, uh-huh. and I'm doing that a lot just now and that's actually working really really well for engagement so get a lot of engagement on Instagram for example and you would think that that would be the the place you probably wouldn't get any engagement but it's working really really well mm-hmm. so what I'm so in essence what I'm doing is I'm I'm seeing someone someone's putting a piece of content out there and I'm replying now so I guess it comes back to what you asked me you know how do you build your audience and actually um People would people would naturally sort of fall to well. How can I create more content? Well, actually, you don't need to do that. You could actually engage with other people's content that's already there. Everyone that's sharing content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they are saying, I've, "I'm doing this thing. I want you to see it. Could you, you know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, engage with me, have a conversation with me?" That's what people are really saying when they're putting their content out there. Yeah. Otherwise, why why would they why would they do it? Or they want you to share their content. So I would say that actually, you know, you don't have to get overwhelmed with creating content, as you, but spend time also engaging with other people's content too. I think that is actually can be more powerful especially in the beginning when you haven't got your own audience as you can go and actually speak reach out to people um on on social so i think that would be a a technique that i would definitely uh, do more of if uh, i was at if i could go back maybe two three years yeah, absolutely. And it, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, yes, we have this danger of spending maybe more time on social media than needed in terms of that you could use portion of the time doing something I mean creating content for example Mm -hmm. but at the same time I I kind of think that by being there uh, and and keeping track on what's going on you end up sometimes um, coming across different opportunities which you might not have noticed otherwise so it's just I guess a matter of looking at it in in from a different perspective and uh, from the perspective of someone who is building the audience and and coming and seeing what what can be done. I like you know there are always many people who need some kind of help or advice or support and things like that. Yes. And, and that is something that is not you know forgotten. Mm. If if you spend those five minutes just you know uh, providing a useful link or you know answering to a question, that yeah. will definitely be an investment and not a wasted five minutes. Absolutely. I mean, I've taken an example. A guy called uh, Jay just recently started his podcast. He connected me, connected with me on link. Uh, sorry, on Instagram, just saying that he liked the pod, like he liked my podcast, and he wanted to connect, and he was asking questions. We took it into email. He's ended up in my uh, Facebook group, um, and he's actually connecting with a lot of people in there as well. Now, Jay had to. A lot of people don't do this. They don't reach out. They mm-hmm. feel like they they don't. Um, they don't have the right to do it or they don't they don't 
they don't think anyone's going to listen. Um, but actually, it's the bit, one of the best things you can do is actually look at someone's content and think, well, what would I like to ask this person or how, would, how can this person help me or how can I help them? And reach out to them, send them an email, um, reach out to them on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. Um, I, I mean, people people don't mind. I was amazed actually yeah. just to <laughs> thinking about this podcast today. I know that you've interviewed some some big names, and I have as well. And the only and people ask me all the time is, how did you get them onto your show? Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I asked them. I asked them if they would like to come onto the show. That was it. Simple, really, really simple stuff. There's yeah. nothing complicated about it. And you'll find that actually people love to help and people want to help you. So if you're at that early stage where you're building your audience and you want to build up and get known in your space, wherever that might be, geographically or in an industry segment or something, then you've got to start connecting with people and, and let people know that you're around in a way that isn't isn't sort of intrusive, but builds the relationship up, builds the trust um, builds that connection and you do that all through your personality don't you so yeah absolutely and uh, I was just wondering is there any um, way of understanding like for example podcasts are really hot these days and you, you know they're like mm. hot subject and many many get into this because it's growing etc etc so um, are there any specific content formats or content types that are working better than the rest these days Right. Okay. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your content. So uh, I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So a podcast, for example, is audio format. Everyone that's listening to the show has listened to podcasts before, might even produce podcasts. But it's not very good for things like search engine optimization and being found through Google, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's an it's audio format, unless you have a blog associated with it or anything or something like that. So I've got a good friend of mine who is massively into podcasting. He's quite successful here in Scotland. And he gets a lot of his traffic to his website. Remember, he's a he is a podcaster, but he gets a lot of his traffic to his web his website through his blogs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my point being, um, just from that example, is that it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your content. Now, he loves podcasts. That's what he does. He actually teaches other people how to produce podcasts mm -hmm. and publishes podcasts for them. But most of his traffic comes to his website through his blog. Um, and then it's on to the podcast. So you can think, you think to yourself, well, how is, you know, he's a podcaster. So why would he not why would he not get most of his traffic through his podcast? It's a different medium. It works in different ways. So I think you really have to, all, all the platforms work really well in their own right, I think. And it just really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your content. So if you're trying to increase traffic to your website, if you're trying to um, own a space, for example, on Google, or you're trying to beat your competition with search engine rankings, then probably a blog and lots of lots of written content on your website would be fantastic for you, lots of pages. Whereas if you're trying to build relationships up and connect with people on a different level, um, you know, win hearts and minds, then perhaps a podcast would be uh, a better form for that or video, you know. So it really it just depends. I think they all work well if done well. Mm -hmm. um, but for different reasons, depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. So that would be m my comments on that. Yes, podcasting's hot right now, um, but but like a, but like I've just mentioned, blogs can work very very well as well as as content. Um, I guess some of the other things that are really hot right now are webinars. Um, webinars seem to be to be working really really well for people just now. Um, and um, I guess it's always, as social media has kind of matured as well, images, video, for example, on Facebook is hot right now. Um, so yeah, it just, you know, it really depends what you're trying to do with your content. And if you are at that early stage in your journey, then, and I've said this already, is that you've really got to watch your time because you really are putting your time into your content. You're not, it's not necessarily about finance or money mm -hmm. that you're investing, but time. So you can get overwhelmed with all these different channels. I would say early on, try and pick one that you feel is going to work best over a longer period of time and just go kind of all in on that one platform and don't get too distracted by all the other all the other platforms because there's loads there's a thousand and one ways to get your message out there i would say focus on creating a rich source of content for you know my gut feel is that a blog is going to be good for most writers um and and go all in on that and make that and really own that space
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, how do you think, I mean, uh, when they are, I mean, I know many people who kind of, you know, who, who read different things and are about different platforms, like, you know, someone who wrote about huge success on Instagram, and then they're like, oh, you know, Instagram works well, I should try that. And then they read something about Pinterest and, and etc. And these people end up chasing, you know, The, yeah. the magic button let's say and end up just you know being in in between all those channels and not yes. really getting deep into that so they waste yes. time doing that so i guess the point that you mentioned that all of them work and all of them work well if you have a good content should be kind of emphasized because that's really i i, I guess it's about the quality of the content and it doesn't really matter whether it's audio or written or you know mm -hmm. a nice picture with a quote or whatever it is it just has mm -hmm. to resonate with the audience and it has to kind of have some kind of value and be of a good quality yes the yeah. mistakes that the mistakes that people typically make is they try to do too much mm. they get overwhelmed spread themselves too thin and then they they make the next mistake because of that and that is they become inconsistent with their content so Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just wondering, uh, like, we spoke a lot about knowing your audience, knowing where they are, knowing what, what kind of content they prefer, and, you know, what format they prefer to absorb the content by, etc. Uh, how important it is that they know about you and about your personality and how personal one should be while creating his content? Mm hmm. Okay, so that's a good point. Um, again, I would come back to thinking to myself, well, what is it you're actually trying to achieve? How do you differentiate yourself from someone else? Um, and I think that the, the best way for any one of us to differentiate is by being as personable as possible. So I think as you go down this content marketing journey and you start to write your blogs or you start to do your podcast or your videos or whatever, your personality has to feature quite highly in there, um, your personal brand. and build Because that's essentially what you're doing is you're building your personal brand. As an author, as a writer, your name you know, is, is going to be known to people. So you want to give them a feel for who you are. Share your stories, share your personality, definitely. Absolutely. I think that's absolute. I think it's a priority for all of us, especially in any small business space, is to make sure that we are conscious that what we're actually doing with our content is building our personal brand. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, whatever we put out there, it's, it's gonna eventually uh, have impact on how we're perceived, I guess. Yeah, so every podcast episode that you do, Annie, every blog that you write, every publication that you put out there is a part of your story. You know, it's, it's all... It's all a part of your story. It's not like you can do it overnight. You can't create your personal brand and establish your personal brand in one book or one publication or one blog article or one podcast. It's a series of all of this put together that starts to tell the story, that starts to put you out there. I think one of the best ways that you can connect with an audience is by being yourself um, and getting your story out there as well. Because people want to know what's behind the behind the brand or um, you know behind the, the the how you actually published a book and all that. They want to know know the behind the scenes stuff I think mm -hmm. um, I think you've got to throw that open I mean you look at people like Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas and all these guys the big names but there's other people doing it too where they're kind of really pulling back the curtain and letting people see into what they're actually doing their processes their systems their life you mm -hmm. know their and their whole personal brand so they can connect with them on a personal level because that is the ultimate connection that's what we're all we all are we're all people at the end of the day and you know why should i buy your book over someone else's or why would i buy any of your products than uh, than the competitions and the best way to do that for all of us is to try and build the that personal connection i know that the best companies and the best businesses in the world know their customers better than anyone else can emotionally connect with their customers with it better than anyone else and they just get closer to their customers they just do you know what i mean they're able to pull them in Mm -hmm. Closer and closer all the time through their through their content, through their marketing, through their products, through their customer service, whatever it might be. And I think that is the trick for ev anyone in business that's trying to do anything. Even if you're a self-publisher, you've still got to sell it to me. You've still got to get me to download it. You've still got to get me to read it. Um, you're still got to. You're still competing with you know, my time. You've got to get me to invest my time in it. So I need a good reason to do that. And if I know you and I like you and I trust you 
then the chances are that I'm going to be more likely to want to read your content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't happen overnight, unfortunately. So <laughs> it, it takes doesn't. time. I'm, it certainly does take time to build all of that up. And that's why you need to start now. Yeah, absolutely. And in that case, how do one um, knows how to keep the balance between what the audience resonates with and what the audience needs and what his personality is about? I mean, how much of each component should the content include? Okay, so I think you mean how the different types of content. So the different type of... Um, also, for example, if you... I mean, how much uh, should the content include the components and the elements of what the audience needs and wants and uh, the personality, the personal part of you? Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, I've never really thought about that before, Annie. I think <laughs> that it's probably a mixture of all, of all those things, to be honest. Um, when you're writing your content, I don't want to teach anyone how to suck eggs here at all, but I think when you're writing your content, you need to, it needs to be, it's good if you can uh, put a story in there, right? Mm -hmm. um, to kind of open it up and get the interest and try and get that story across and the lessons across through, through the content. Um, I think you have to have both elements and, and most, most content that I write has both, both elements, I would say. Um, people remember the lessons through the stories. So if you've got something you want to share with people, then the best way to do that is to kind of put a story in there that kind of gets that that lesson across in, in, in a metaphorical way maybe or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be a real story um, that you could share f with you from your own experience. Um, I think there has to be both. To make it interesting and to make it unique, I think you have to have both in there. Mm -hmm. And and I think that uh, these days, like, you know, uh, writers really have a competitive edge because they are storytellers. And mm. these days in the content creation, storytelling is very important, like, you know, in all formats. Like we had uh, the serial uh, as a podcast, which was a story uh, storytelling kind of uh, very strong storytelling component in there. Mm. And we had, uh, we have uh, like, you know, big names like James Altucher, whose content is all about and around his personal life stories. And based yes. on that, he, he gets different opinions and lessons and things That's that right. he, messages he wants to take out. So I guess by being a storyteller, writers kind of already have that in themselves, but they just have to put it out and make sure that they do it better than the rest. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it's your ability to tell a true story well, isn't it? And um, be able to get that across in a way that's interesting enough for people that they would want to read it. Um, I think that's important. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And James Altucher, is, he's one of the best. Yeah. Um, like you said, he gets a lot of mixed mixed um, opinions about his content but there's no there's no denying that he's really been as transparent and um, shared his story um, you know as, as better than better than most I would say yeah and what about I mean uh, we there are many debates around this subject of duplicating content and modifying okay. it in different options so you can basically you can write a blog post and then you can record a video with that message and then you can mm -hmm. use that video's audio to have a podcast episode and you can have the post in your blog and then in medium and then on LinkedIn as a publisher etc etc so how do you approach that what is the right way should one go along and kind of you know modify the content in various different formats so everyone whoever consumes different type of contents is exposed to it um yes there's probably a more right there's probably not a completely right answer to this in that I don't know what the right answer is, actually. It's probably the best way to say it. Um, we've experimented with a few things, um, repurposing content from blogs into LinkedIn publishing. Um, I talk, for example, I talk a lot on my podcast about the blogs that I've written um, and try and articulate more of the story in audio format. Um, and some people can connect with that better than they connect with the written word. I know some people that, that um, produce an audio of their blog. It's not a podcast, but it's an audio of their blog. Um, just to try and attract different people who consume content in different ways. So there's an element of trying to think about the audience again. What what type of content would they be more likely to consume? Um, 
But I think that you know repurposing content is a really great idea. You want to you know to use uh, I think it's Mark Schaefer's. Um, he he says you know to use the whole buffalo. So to try and use every single piece of your content and try and repurpose as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good idea to do that. Um, I think a lot of people think it's going into that though. They think I'll create a video and from a video I can have a blog, a podcast and a video. It's actually a lot more difficult than that, but um, you know, to do, um, but it it can be done. So I would absolutely um, encourage anyone to think about their content in a longer form. Um, Try and think about how they can get more from their content. Yeah, definitely. Um, how they can use a blog or a blog series. How they can repurpose that onto LinkedIn and LinkedIn publishing and drive people back to their back to their website. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the key thing is, is what people are trying to do by doing that is they're trying to get their content shared more and they're trying to get more people to see that they've actually got content. So if you create a blog and you've got lots of blog articles on your website and you're not telling anybody about it, then you can't expect people to know about it either, can you? So yeah. you do need to you do need to kind of use these social channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it might be. You do need to use these channels to get your content out there. But, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it a lot, making sure that you're using the platform in the right way. Um, you're not just repurposing your content because you can, but mm-hmm. you're doing it. You're doing it in a way that's actually relevant and within context of that platform. Yeah, I see. And uh, well, I guess uh, all those platforms are have a um, slight uh, amount of risk in a sense that you know it's not yours. So you may mm-hmm. have uh, Facebook followers, you may have Twitter followers. Later on, if something happens, you may lose them all because you don't really have it in your own database or in your own email list. Yes. So uh, email list is like the thing which. Uh, ensures direct relationship and di- direct communication with mm-hmm. with with your audience so how can you i mean are there any specific tricks and tips of creating such a content that will eventually make yeah. people get into your list yeah okay so this is a good one in that um i was just on I was just on someone's website just now, actually, before this call, and I went to go and download some of their content, and it was all gated, right? I couldn't get any of their content, apart from their blogs, without putting my email address in, mm-hmm. okay? So I didn't put my email address in. I didn't go for their content. Um, and actually, Annie, we had the chat on Facebook about your, your gate yeah. as well. I want to get to the content, right? When I'm looking at people's content, I want to get there. I want to, I want to download. I want to read it. Um, and I might then, you know, I might then put myself on the list because I like the content and I want to be on the list. Um, I think that people try to do, people try to do it too early on. I think in the process, try to get people on their list. Mm-hmm. I think you've got to build the trust up first. People are very savvy now. They don't just give their email address away at the drop of a hat you have to have something that they want something that they want to get something that they want to be part of so i would say that one of the things you can do is you can give a lot you know give a lot of value to people up front as much as you can and then make it obvious to them where they can put their email address in and subscribe for more and one of the one of the ways to make that enticing for them is to give them a really nice piece of content that they can't get from your blog or get from your podcast it's something unique something valuable something that they might even actually pay for if they you know if there was a value if there was a, a monetary value associated with it um i think you've got to have that on your website you know things like a, an area for someone to subscribe to like a box on the on the sidebar or in the footer mm-hmm. or somewhere where people can subscribe you've got to make it really it's just not the it's not the same as what it used to be you know a few years ago where people would just subscribe and your list would build it's it's getting harder and harder to get people to get on get them onto your list so you do need to make sure that they know that it's valuable um but you also have to they also have to trust you i think it's the same thing it comes back to what we've talked about already mm-hmm. Um, people need to have that relationship with you already. Um, and the perfect example is, and I'm, I'm maybe I'm a little bit different because I'm kind of in that space, but when I went to another person's website, I didn't download any of their content. But, mm-hmm. you know, what if everything, what if like nine of their eBooks were free and the one and one of them, the best one or the one that seems to be the best was the one that you actually have to put your email address in for? I don't know. Um, there's lots of ways you can do it. But I guess one of the things I would say is you've got to make it obvious that mm-hmm. you are trying to communicate with people. 
Okay. So what are, yeah, yeah, one of the one of the things that we've done in the past is lots of ebook stuff, trying to get people onto the list with ebooks. Um, and this time, what we've done is we've said we've got this weekly newsletter that we put out every week with lots of great marketing content in it, and that seems to be working really, really well for us. A highly curated weekly newsletter, not my content, not our content, but curated content to help people with their marketing so that work that seems to work really well we're getting subscribers every day for that the most that's worked the best out of all the all the types of free content that we've given away so uh, you know that you've got to try something but um yeah definitely make it obvious and make it valuable for people but don't assume that someone's just going to come onto your website and put their email address into a box Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see. It's interesting you said that uh, about the newsletter because I'm getting questions very often saying like, okay, uh, I have a certain amount of email subscribers. Now, what do I do? I mean, what mm. do I send them? Uh, do I mean, if I'm sending them the content I'm already creating and putting out for free, they would kind of, you know, it's not really much of an added value because they could read it on the blog anyway so it's not really a a new thing or Mm. they don't really feel special about being on your list because you kind of you you send them out the same things you're you're giving out to everyone else so the newsletter can be one of the uh, this you know extra valuable thing you're giving specifically for them Mm -hmm. uh what else could i mean uh if you're creating something specifically for your mailing list, is this content marketing too? Yes, it is. Yes, if your you know if your definition of content marketing is to add more value to your audience and communicate with them without selling, then absolutely. Um, I had a conversation with a business owner recently, actually, who said to me, um, "We're creating an, an email newsletter every month. Is that content marketing?" And I said to him, is it information about your company or is it relevant and valuable to your customers? And he said, it's about my company. Mm. And I said, well, it's not content marketing then. <laughs> so that's, that, that was one, one, um, one example really of how you can define if it's content marketing or not. Is it going to be something that's going to be valuable to your customers, relevant to your customers, answer their questions, solve their problems? Then that's you sort of on your way to achieving content and content marketing, I would say, the best type of content. Okay. And you said that webinars are working quite well now. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine, like, if you are an author and if you are writing books, especially if you are a fiction author, how could mm-hmm. you possibly use webinars? Is there any way they could possibly look at it somehow? Um Yes, there probably is. I don't know the answer. I don't. I actually don't do webinars. It's something that's on my my horizon just now, and I know that a lot of big people are are doing them. But again, it comes back to what you're trying to sell. I mean, if you were doing a webinar about selling a book, or we could you do a webinar about an event that you're putting on, or something instead, something that's not about their core product. You could do a lot of things. I reckon authors could do a lot of things with webinars. Um, if they thought a little bit outside the box and not just about their book, but about other ways that they can add value to their audience. A webinar is a great way to sort of answer questions, to do like a Q&A, or they could bring on another author onto their webinar and do an interview with them and do a Q&A there. There's lots of stuff they could do with webinars, really. If you if you kind of separate yourself from your core offering, which is your book, and you think to yourself, well, what else do I, my, my audience could get, what else could my audience get value from? How can I be that person that is their go-to person for this, I don't know, this type of content or this, I don't know, how can we connect even more with our audience through something like a webinar? Um, it's a highly, again, it's like a podcast, I guess, in a way it's highly interactive Mm-hmm. Uh, not interactive, but highly personable. Sorry, a podcast isn't that interactive, really, because you can't speak to other people while you're doing it. But um, a webinar is, and it is also just like a, a podcast in the fact that it's personable as well. You get to see people, you get to hear their voice, you get to build a relationship up as well. Um, yeah, so I think there's probably there's probably a lot of things that could be done with webinars if you wanted to really connect with your audience. Um, you could do online events and things like that. I know that authors might have a worldwide audience, so it might not be that you could just go have a, a meeting in a cafe. Yeah. But you exactly. could have an you could have an online webinar or an online event where you can get your audience to come on from all over the world and connect and with the community 
around your content around what it is that you do so yeah I absolutely think that there's there's space there and there's lots and lots of resources online on how to how to start a webinar john lee dumas has some great stuff and i know that a lot of people other people do as well mm -hmm. yeah exactly Okay, so if if we try to wrap things up, so uh, apparently uh, we spoke about many things that uh, were related to audience building, uh, were related to creating different forms of content. And uh, so I would like to point out, we, we spoke briefly about that it takes time and it's just, you know, one piece of a content at a time. And it's about building that trust and, and uh, building the awareness about your personal brand etc so yeah. writers are extremely impatient people mm -hmm. so let's let's when we say it takes time uh, can we mm. kind of quantify that time in average like you know what is the minimum they should expect that not get discouraged if things don't work out let's say in two or three days um well how do i how do i put this into quantity i've been i've I've been doing, I've been writing blogs and on and off for about five years. In the last 18 months, I've really focused on one niche marketing and then onto content marketing, produced a podcast for a year. And I would say that and within about 18 months, I have managed to get much more traction now than I ever have had in the past, right? So 18 months seems like a good time, right? Now that might seem like a long time to someone. Um, and is that is that what you is that what yeah. you kind of get into? Is yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah. When I speak to businesses who are creating no content at the moment, I say to them, you need we need to be doing this for at least a year. Okay, we need to go all in for about a year to see some serious traction. Now it depends what you're measuring, though, Annie. To be honest, because if you're measuring like your first blog article, how much traffic to the website, how many people left the comment, how many likes I got on Facebook, those are great things to measure in the beginning user indicators is what they're called to kind of see that people are actually interacting and engaging with your content so it depends what you're measuring it depends what you determine to be successful you know how do you know your content's working so it really depends on what your what your kind of measurements are for success but you know i think that if you're going to this is a long-term strategy i would say i think you do need to see that like it's just like anything in life though say you're offline and you're going to a networking event you can't expect people to buy into you right away it takes time to build that trust that relationship up it's just that you're doing that online now um and it might take just that little bit longer to do that so i'd say that you've got to see the long-term benefits of building an audience um and you've got to you've got to, not only long term benefits of building an audience, but the actual benefit of having a core audience, um, a bunch of raving fans, people that love your content. And when you publish a new book, you know thousands of people are going to go and download it and share it online. That's what you're looking for, and that takes time. It's like um, it's like anything, any sports team, for example. You know they've got a core audience, they've got a core bunch of fans. Mm -hmm. They buy the tickets, they buy the football strips, they come back every week, even if they lose. You know, so it's that's what you're looking for. It's that type of relationship you're looking for to build through your content. Um, so it's more than a community. It's more than a group of people. It's a, uh, it's an, it's your, it's your core audience, basically, your or what Seth Godin would call as your tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, yeah, I guess it's, you know, uh, we, we kind of covered all the basics. And mm -hmm. uh, I think for, for people who are just starting out, we, you know, uh, I guess it was quite clear for them what it is about and, you know, how to approach it and what can be done. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I also, you know, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned the quality of the relationship because um, I, I've spoken about this on the podcast uh, also. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's not about numbers. It's about relationships. No. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, while creating the content, just, you know, may, one should make sure that, you know it, it's not just you know a blog post packed with keywords for us you know to get just you know un, uh, unexplained traffic of people mm -hmm. who will spend just a few seconds on your site and just leave mm -hmm. but it's more about content that will resonate with people and will make them want to come back and will make them spend a few minutes and actually uh, send you an email which is really really cool thing to to receive yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's less about traffic. It's more about 
resonating, like you said, with your audience. I think you have to focus on how you're going to build a community. So a really short example of that would be we had a Facebook group um, about three months ago. It had about 60 members in it. Okay, It was a closed group, private group, and it was only people that I that I'd done business with, had, had some sort of personal connection with. And then we started to invite m- new people to that group. And now it has over 400 members in that group now. And that's starting to be a community. And the reason that I, the reason that I know that it's a community is because people are actually talking to each other when I'm not there. Mm-hmm. Right? That, those people are helping each other. I'm not, it's not my group. It's their community now. It's nothing to do with me. And that's when you start to see that take shape where you're not the one that's having to actually motivate people all the time. They're actually motivating themselves. They're talking to themselves. And that's kind of what you're looking for is to build that really nice community and culture around the one thing that you all have in common, which is the thing that you do. Yeah. Your story, your Mm-hmm. your business whatever it is that you that you do so i think there's and that's when you put your content out and people they 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 lap it up and they share it and they involve themselves in it um and i think that's where you really want to get to um is is to get is just get so close to your customers um and your audience as as much as you can and keep going more and more and just get build a deeper connection with them I think that's when it gets really exciting. And then you think to yourself, well, what's content marketing got to do with all of that? And content, <laughs> is, content is the hub of that. That's where it all takes place, I think. That's where the culture grows from. So, yeah, that's, my, that's what I'm working on just now. I think it's a really interesting space. And I think that that's what all marketers, business people, you know, even authors, anyone that's trying to sell something or get someone to do something, something that, get them to do something that they wouldn't otherwise do, mm-hmm. um, is to try and build those personal connections with people as much as you can. Um, you know, like five, five people that would share your content is better than a thousand people that won't, you know, you need to, and like yeah. you said, it's not about the numbers, it's about the connection you have with those people. So I can't overemphasize that enough. I think it's so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming over. I mean, this, this interview also was a result of a relationship, I guess. <laughs> and, yeah, you definitely. know, that's, that's like the vivid example and demonstration of what we spoke about basically yeah and um thanks a lot for coming thank you for sharing um you know what you know and for yeah. making it sound quite simple <laughs> because <laughs> it's not really <laughs> yeah no, well yeah. i hope it hasn't yeah that's one of the things one of the dangers is it sounds too simple but no thanks very much for having me on the show annie i've really enjoyed talking to you and talking about the things that i'm passionate about as well so thanks very much for having me on and giving me the opportunity to to speak to everyone thank you you're welcome Well, I guess that was it for today. Thank you very much, as always, for listening to the interview. I hope that you got some value out of it. Well, I guess now, once you know how important content marketing is, you will go ahead and start creating content and marketing it on a regular basis. Take care, have a nice day, and of course, keep on writing. Hey, authors. Wish you could just write books and forget about all this marketing and coordinating with freelancers and formatting and proofreading and stuff? You're not alone. It's every artist's dream to just be able to create art while turning over the whole business and marketing side to someone who really loves and is really great at doing just that. If you're ready to start treating your writing like a business and get an experienced publishing and marketing team behind your words, pay a visit to Archangel Inc., Archangel Inc. does absolutely everything needed to take a manuscript and turn it into a finished product ready to sell in all markets and multiple formats from cover design to audiobook and everything in between. And as an Archangel Inc. client, you'll be able to promote your book through Buck Books, the world's fastest growing book promotion website at no extra charge. To find out more, go to www.archangelinc.com. That's archangelinc.com.